All right, what's up, everybody? We have another answer stock. This is a Christmas answer stock. I have nothing red except my Ferrari key, so <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> to me. <laughs> I have nothing red. I'm looking. I'm in bed. I got white. I got black. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. What are you, are you celebrating Christmas, Matt? Yes, I am. What are you, what are you doing for the holidays? So my brother and my nephew who was just born is coming over and we're doing Christmas and then we're going to go over to my girlfriend's house because Christmas Day is actually her birthday. Wow. So I have a trip all planned out for her. She doesn't even know. And uh, that will be that's the way we do our Christmas. So Christmas here, then Christmas at her parents house. And it'll be kind of cool because it'll be the baby's first Christmas. So beautiful can you dress up like you and your your brother and somebody else like is the three wise men and hold the baby <laughs> that would actually be a good idea that would be an amazing instagram post yeah uh, i've never done that but yeah that's a good idea just throw it out there i'm gonna dress up as santa i got i got toys i'm gonna hand out toys to uh to uh you know like homeless people and stuff like that homeless kids and i don't know I'm gonna be yeah, I really like that you do that. You have a blue Santa suit, right? I I have. Well, that's that's a Hanukkah Harry suit. It's not a, a Crips Christmas like some people seem to comment. Um, but Hanukkah is over, so now I'm just I'm going straight up Santa. I've so got a beard. And, what's up? Red beard. Yeah, Hold yeah. On. I got my. I'm gonna be delivering. I got you know the red Ferrari and the red Santa, so it's gonna be like you know Santa's got a brand new sleigh. It's gonna be sweet. You'll see. I'll I'll post some photos, um, and I'm also seeing Star Wars on Christmas. So really, very exciting. Ben has seen Star Wars. He says it's amazing, but he can't. Ben, what's the spoilers of that movie? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no don't worry, I'll tell you. No spoilers. Anyways, happy Christmas, happy holidays to everybody out there. Matt and I were just talking about taxes, which is not a fun topic but matt what were you saying about you know this year i've made about two hundred thousand dollars in trading profits how much have you made roughly oh somewhere between 400 and 500 so give or take a hundred thousand yeah. I, don't, I don't try to dollars. focus on that because it gets in my head so um i understand it's just funny most <laughs> of my students most of your students you know, have like 5,000 to their name, like 20,000 to their name. You might want to consider when you say, ah, give or take 100,000, like that's their dreams. <laughs> you know, like when, when we're eating like a giant prime rib and my dog, my little puppy Miley is looking up at me and I'm like, oh, this was like a small prime rib. And she's like, ah! <laughs> when the get, prime rib weighs more than your dog. Yeah, she would give anything to have like even a small piece of steak. And she's like, and I'm like, ah, you know, this is a small one. So try and consider other people's feelings. Yeah, no, I mean. Give or take $100,000. I wish I could be more precise, but I don't look at that. So until the I understand. I understand. I, a lot of traders are like that. Tim Gratani, you know, big fan of not looking at necessarily the trading profits. For me, maybe it's because I'm Jewish. Maybe it's because I'm cheap. I don't know. I'm always obsessed with looking at my numbers. Like, I don't know how to trade without looking at my numbers. And I, to be fair, I get out of a lot of good trades too soon because I'm like, I just made two grand in like an hour. Like that's a lot. Let me get out. And I, I cut my potential short. Yeah. It's just for me. I, um, I try not to look at it because that always messes with my head. So even like cracking above like net profits of a million dollars, like because I was thinking of that number, I was struggling to even get above that. I wasn't trading the, the normal way. Well, so when my camera crew and I went to Tim Gratani's house to try and capture him the first time, crossing a million dollars and their camera's all in his face and he lost like 50 grand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was so bad. And I was like, oh, so we had to go back a few times. And I, I understand that's a very popular way of thinking with successful traders, not looking at your daily profits trying to focus on the pattern, trying to trade the opportunity the best that you can. So I'm not knocking you, but a lot of people who don't have a million or a hundred thousand dollars, it's tough. 
Yeah, but the only thing, if you have a small account, I think that you should focus on is percentage gains. So if you had 10,000 and then you, you know, let's say you have a 20, 25, 30, 35, whatever, look at the percentage, not the actual dollar value. Because, because yeah. even for me, yeah, I may be of that amount of money, but if you look like on return on capital year over year, I went from 600% to like, a hundred percent or a little bit less than a hundred percent give that's, or take that's tough man i i feel for you, you know? <laughs> i'm just saying if you really want to be statistical about it so no you're 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 absolutely right and it's it's you know a lot of people ask me this question like how do you not look at your profits and i i don't know how like i don't know how to go to vegas i don't gamble in vegas but you know if theoretically i'm making this analogy and i'm putting ten thousand dollars on a like a blackjack table and then I'm like, Hey dealer, can you watch my 10 grand? I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I don't know how to do that. You know, I'm the only time I gamble in Vegas is with wheel of fortune, but that's just cause I like spinning the wheel and I feel special. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how to turn off my money in my, my, yeah, Judy. I think, I think though for you, you've been, you're able... not Jewish though. Are you? No. So that might be a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> We're trading. There's a lot of Jews and we're, we're like, we want that money and we can't help it. This is the way we're raised. You know, when I was in a little crib and you're looking up at like the little thing spinning above you, like my mom would have like a $20 bill and I was like, Benjamin. And I got, you know, I didn't know which one it was like the 20 or a hundred dollar bill. Like you're, you're, you were raised differently, right? You're all into reverse osmosis. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. I think for you, honestly, just from an outsider looking at, I think you've been able to separate. Yeah, you'll look at your PL, but you don't trade your PL. That's the key difference. So Yeah, I mean I don't I don't say, okay, I want to make a hundred dollars in the day or five hundred or that. I don't set monetary goals. I try and look at the opportunity uh on my trades, but I am a little influenced by like when my numbers get up. You know, like I've had last year I had uh two Seventy thousand dollar profits in one day, and I took both of them, and I was like, like shaking. And you know, had I held the long an extra hour, it would have been like a hundred forty thousand dollar profit. Had I held the short, I was shorting this pump and dump CNTO. Um, an extra, it, it actually got halted. So when it reopened, I covered right away for nearly seventy thousand dollars in profits. Had I held another two days, it would have been like two hundred thousand. So even on my big trades. I get out too soon. So for me, you know, I do get influenced by the big, big dollar amounts. But at the same time, making seventy thousand dollars in a day, there's worse problems. <laughs> there are worse problems in the world. Exactly. So, all right, let's get to our first Christmas answer stock question. Remember to email admin at timothysykes.com any questions you want answered, and Matt Superman and I will answer. Um, Superman couldn't make it. He's actually. Santa Claus. Um, so he's out delivering um, gifts today. You know, I, I, didn't, Santa, I didn't. Santa Claus's sleigh broke down, so he had to fly around the world. No, I mean like his 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 uh, his alias is that he's Superman, but he's really Santa. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Raymond Raymond says, "What is the solution of morning confusion between several plays?" Raymond's coming up with his own words. I like it, Raymond. Uh, what should I trade when there's more than one good play? What do you What do you do with that, Matt? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, for me, I try to have all of my plays beforehand. And if I haven't re the way I do process of elimination, let's say I read something like real quick, and I'm like, oh wow, this sounds amazing. But for me, if I haven't done my due diligence and I've just found the trade in the first 15 minutes of trading, let's say I'm most likely not going to take that. I will take only the trades that I've put forth a great amount of effort. Uh, that's the way I deal with that kind of confusement. Because some days there are there. Are you using that word now? Yeah. Are we making this a word? Exactly. So that's the beauty of the English language. We just do whatever we want to do, and we uh, do whatever the fuck we want to do. <laughs> exactly. So. For me, you know, the market, you know, the futures market could be going crazy. And then you have stocks also going crazy, a lot of small cap stocks going crazy. So just focus on setups and plays that you're sort of prepared for. Don't always leap into chasing everyone else who's trying to 
play the new hottest thing. So trade your own setup and breathe. Always remember to breathe when you're trading when that happens. Cause, cause that's when a lot of people get in trouble. They go, they go stir crazy. It's tough, especially at the market open where you have like some crazy stock spikes and you're like, Oh, let me chase this one. Let me chase that one. And then you miss one and you're like, Oh, I got to chase. And you know, for me, it's tough to trade more than two positions at a time. Very rarely will you ever see me take two positions. Most of the time I just have one position. Um, so my confusement happens when there's too many plays and I, I often miss, you know, plays if there's like three hot stocks. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm trying to be prepared with my watch list the night before. Um, but you know, I, I can only teach what's worked for me. And I know a lot of traders that they think that's not real trading. They, they're like, Oh, you have to be hedged. You know, you have five long, six shorts. I, I don't know how to do that. Um, I'm looking at every tick, you know, part of the reason why I'm so safe, you know, this is the first year I haven't had really a, a, a huge, huge loss is because I'm so careful, um, especially seven years into a bull market. I, I think you have to be much more careful this year and next year than you would like if you were year two, year three of a bull market. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying I expect a crash. I'm just on guard, always on guard because, you know, historically we are in the later stages of, you know, how long a bull market can last. Amen. All right, another question. This comes from Julie. And Julie says, Matt, I like your hair this way. Um, what products do you use? I, I didn't ask <laughs> didn't that. Know she did it. This, that. Is, this is Julie from Michigan. I don't use any products on my hair. Okay. That was boring. Julie, well, what, did, what did you want me to say? I just. I don't know. Tell the truth. Julie, Julie's asking. I'm not asking. I don't care. You. <laughs> Let me see. All right. there, I have another answer stock question. Uh, I'm so disorganized. All right. Um, okay. This is good. This is a good one. This is from Dave in Switzerland. Cool. Dave, what's up? Uh, Dave says, now that we are in the later stages of a bull market, how are you preparing differently for 2016? Cool. Want to answer that, Matt? So for the last year or so, I've been more to the short side. One thing I like to find in the stock realm is one, a lot of high flying PE ratio kind of stocks that are doing 50 to 100 multiples like CYBR. Um, there's a couple in the cybersecurity space. Really, it's just pre compiling a list of stocks that have overflown or overshot their uh, balance sheets and also their fundamentals as well as their technicals. Because in a bear market cycle, what you'll see is stocks that have high flying, they'll just get crushed. Those are the first ones to go. And then you'll have the entire like small cap sector also get crushed. And then the major caps will crush. And it will, it's just a continuation effect. And so you need to always have a list of stocks that when a bear or a bull market kind of phase starts in the market that you're interested in buying or selling because it's usually the first or the second year where when it starts to capitulate a little bit that you'll see these things just crash down and those are the easiest kinds of things so be prepared always really that's really what it comes down to look at the oil market i mean i made most of my money last you know this last year uh on oil shorting oil why because it was that time. It was a bull market for everyone else. It was a bear market in oil. So you just have to be prepared for the different cycles because they will affect stocks in different manners. Penny stocks, not they don't follow normal markets, but they will get crushed if the market does get hurt. So Yeah. You know, I'm I've been praying for a crash for quite a few years. I want some time off. Um, you guys you know, I, I know a lot of people are fearful of a bear market. You're like, what if the plays disappear? You know, what if it's like the, the Native Americans in the buffalo and there's no more buffalo to hunt? You know, uh. all I can – why is that funny? I'm Native American, but yeah, continue. I apologize it's okay. on my behalf of my people to your people. <laughs> we were very inconsiderate with what we did with you guys for centuries. Um 
I'm glad you're doing well, and I'm glad the casinos are doing well. <laughs> it's okay. You guys are getting getting us back, you know, using our own tools against us, fire water and gambling, you know. So I think the rise of the Native Americans will, you know, happen. Um, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Don't take anything I say seriously. Except I never take anything I say seriously. Good. And with the stock market – Always be prepared, but don't be afraid of the market turning. You know, you just have to take it one day at a time. Like, it's not like, oh my God, there's going to be a bear market all in, in one day. You might get a crash in one day, but then you'll get a bounce. Uh, you know, we had crash earlier this year, and then we've gotten a sustained bounce for the past few months. So is the bear market happening? I don't know. What I am is more careful just in case on every single long, especially overnight, Especially uh, on weekends, you know, I was very cautious on my weekend longs uh, positions uh, because you never know when, if there's going to be a big crash. And I think that we are due. So have that in the back of your mind with every trade. As Matt said, penny stocks are a little crazy. They don't necessarily, uh, you know, stick to what the overall market is doing. Sometimes you'll see a market crash and the only stocks up are these blatant pump and dumps. And you're like, why is this happening? Exactly. Um, it's 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 really strange. So for me, just trade cautiously. You know, I know a lot of people are expecting like a Santa Claus rally. Everyone saying, uh, "Oh, this is the statistically the best time of year." Statistically, yes, but statistically, we're also you know coming into the end of a bull market. So which statistic is going to play out? You don't know. Um, just be careful. Be extra careful. This is not the time to be aggressive. Last year was the time to be aggressive. Uh, right now, really be aggressive in your studying. Uh, if there is a bear market, if there is a slowdown with any plays, you get to study more. And you get to watch our DVDs and video lessons much more and be better prepared every single day. You know, Everyone says, oh, what's, what's your number one pick? And my number one pick is always invest in yourself. You are the best investment of your life. Your potential is the greatest because you know yourself. You know what you're capable of. You are in charge of how hard you push yourself. So if you don't push yourself that hard studying, you're probably not going to you know, become the next millionaire student. How hard did you study, Matt, before you ever made a million dollars? you know, How hard? I mean, I had studied markets for 10 years before I placed my first trade. And then when I, that's I, a little insane. Okay, but still, no, what I mean study is, is like it wasn't like anything crazy, but when I actually – when to trade, I would study almost every night for as long as I could. So any kind of free time, no going out, no watching TV, just sit there and learn and learn and absorb. You sound like you have a really fun millionaire lifestyle. <laughs> the fun I have is in the markets. So, And that's a good thing. You know, you don't necessarily have to live big. And, you know, even when you make your money, you don't have to live big. Like, you know, learn from Rocky. You can't. You can't lose the eye of the tiger. You got to fight just to keep it alive. Do you agree with that? I agree. Have you seen the new movie Creed? No, I haven't. I need to see it. I have. I've had no time to go see movies. I've had no time either, <laughs> and that's the the reality of the like, millionaire lifestyle. Everyone says, "Oh, it's so easy." You get hit up by everybody you know, people you don't even know. Uh, you know, you want to teach more. I, I, that's the biggest thing. Like when I became a millionaire, like I see so much bad information and misinformation out there. And I'm just like, I got to correct that. I got to do what I can because I want more people to be able to be in their own position, you know, whether they want to study or go out. Sadly, do you know this stat, Matt? 75% of people hate their jobs. Yes, I did. Can you imagine like, most of your life you're spent at your job and if you hate it, so you hate most of your life. That makes total sense to me. I watch it happen every day. We it's need sad. to stop that. What can we do? What What are you going to do differently in 2016 to try and teach more people? Now that you're not just a self-made millionaire, but you're also a teacher, your subscribers are hitting all-time highs because people love your Klingon-like watch list. <laughs> uh. I mean, I'm I, learning a new language. I feel like the translator with, you know, the interpreter with Nicole Kidman. <laughs> no, I and mean, like this crazy African language that only a few people speak. 
Ben, did you see that movie, The Interpreter? Absolutely. Good film. It was decent. Sydney Powell. What are you going to do in 2016? I mean, really, I'm trying to flesh out being able to be available to more people to teach, honestly. Right now, you know, be, you know, watch list on Profitly, plus I teach people actually right now one-on-one, -on -one, which is getting a little bit insane for me. And, uh, you know, kind of just get everything into a finite space. It's the other problem, too. When you're teaching, plus you're trying to do your own trades, plus you're trying to do your watch list. Then on top of it all, trying to be the best that you can be for all three of those aspects, you know, you have no, you have no time for yourself. But the thing is, is that you have to make it in a way where it's good for you and good for your students. Right now, for me, I think I need to, for myself, I need to separate myself a little bit and make it a little bit easier for them and a little bit easier for me. No, I agree 100%. You know, you got to find a balance. I haven't even found it perfectly yet, but, you know, I do one-on-ones, but really what I love most are like Q&A webinars and, and stuff like this. Again, you guys, ask your questions, email admin at timothysykes.com, and this way we can, you know, teach you guys and get all of this information out to, to thousands of people um, all at once. And, and I think that's a much more scalable option uh, because, you know, I could spend all day with one person and they'll have, you know, 10,000 questions or I could, you know, answer 10,000 questions on videos and webinars and DVDs. So I exactly. highly encourage you to get into the scalable teaching model. Now. <laughs> exactly. And also, what are you going to do for 2016? What are your goals? Um, you know, I have a few millionaire students, but I want more. Um, you know, the, again, a million dollars in today's world is not going to set you totally free. But it's a start, and it's a very good number to reach for. If you look up uh, statisticians, uh, Latham and, and Locke, and goal enhancement theory and performance theory, and you have that big goal in your mind, you you push harder, you do better. Um, so a million dollars, even if you have like a two thousand dollar account, push for it. I'm not saying expect it. I'm not saying you can turn a thousand into a million too. It it, it happens over time, but always think about that big number in the future. So I'm trying to think of projects and ways to get people to think of that number and actually get there. You know, I'm very excited for stocks to trade. Have we sent you a beta yet, Matt? Yeah, I tried actually I tried out the beta when it first came out. Is it different now? We've had a few <laughs> when 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 <laughs> we've had a It was few. like the first year you guys released. No, it. no. So we we initially partnered with Equity Feed uh, and it was basically just a lot of uh, custom programming and white labeling stuff off equity feed. But then they got sick and tired of me asking for new features. I'm like, I want this, I want this, I want this. And they're like, uh, so we're like, all right, let's just do it on our own. So for the past year, we've been working on stocks to trade. Finally just released the beta about, uh, what, like three weeks ago. And it's just starting, but soon, you know, you're going to be able to have like your own little head on the stock charts, like little stuff like that, that, that I care about. You know, when I alert a stock so you can see on the chart, like exactly where the alert was so that you can see like the breakout or the breakdown and little stuff like that. We'll get you a beta. People right. are loving it. We have 100 people so far. Totally brand new. We've spent about $870,000 now on it. Oh, my it. God. <laughs> Software is expensive. You know, it is. It's expensive. It really but is. if you want quality products, um, we also tried working with E-Trade Pro. I love my E-Trade Pro. And they're like penny stocks. Now they don't want to work with us, so that's fine. We'll we'll create our own and we'll make it the best. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I got my Wolf Millionaire. Very excited about that. Teaching people how to make money on Instagram. Uh, not enough people are, are utilizing that. And you know, we talk in terms of trading. What is the risk reward? Like you might lose, you know, ten cents a share, or ideally make like thirty or forty cents a share. So the risk reward is three or four to one. With Wolf Millionaire, the risk reward is like a million to none. Instagram is free. Exactly. Uh, and the upside is literally seven figures. So I think more people should take better risk reward trades and learn new strategies. A lot of people think that I should just stick to the stock market. I think there's more opportunity than just the stock market. And, and you can learn to make money in so many different ways and, and learn about different platforms. You know, Instagram is hot right now. Who knows what other social network will get hot in 2016. We're traders, baby. We're traders. We go wherever it's hot, wherever there's opportunity. 
<laughs> whatever's hot. <laughs> That's it. Whatever's hot, baby. <laughs> Throw your whatever. I don't know. I got to get going. But thank you guys for tuning in. Have a happy holidays from Matt, Ben, Superman, who's out delivering gifts. Um, the whole Profit League team, our families. Uh, just, you know, let's make 2016 a great year. Happy holidays, guys. Peace out, everybody. My name is Tim Sykes, and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm going to talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade.